All right, so we've got another foundation video today. We have another foundation company wanting to pair up another structure, and this time it might be a different story. All right, so here we go. What's going on with these guys? Hi, guys. My name is Yuri Rodriguez. I work with Realty World Living Group, and I do have this property here that uh, uh, had some, uh, well, it has foundation issues, uh, according to the inspector that came to check it out. I've been following Chris on uh, Instagram and his videos, and I noticed he did a video about foundation. Caught my attention and brought him over to my property to check it out. And see so, yeah, but hopefully it's not nothing too major, but uh, hopefully he can give me his advice and see how that goes. All right, nice. So uh, remember from the last video, the steps that you always want to take after a foundation company has been called out by a home inspector is you always want to go to a structural engineer first. They're going to be able to detect the amount of stress that is actually going on in the structure, and they won't just come out and want to hear it. Right now, what we have is a uh, some we're going to shoot some elevation readings and see if they match the foundation or that the foundation company wants to match. But I still recommend going to a structural engineer. Engineer. All right, let's go check it out. Okay, so whenever I'm looking at a, a foundation or a monolithic slab, one of the things that you want to do, one of the things I do, is I always try to assess the big picture. In today's video, I'm going to really try to break down those steps of like what I'm thinking about as I walk up to the property, where I'm going, and what I'm looking at overall to help develop this big picture of what's causing this foundation to move and is it over what I'd call the stress levels or deflection levels enough to get that structural engineer out to determine if the slab is good or not. Okay, so one of the very first steps, and I would like to call it like kind of the amateur step, or say you're a home buyer or even a real estate agent and you're coming up and trying to determine if the slab is good or not, is actually look down the brick line. I've talked about this several times, but if you look down the brick line, what happens is, is whenever that person is laying brick, they're, they're using a level constantly and determining if it's level or not as they're laying the brick, a good brick person would anyways. So if you look down and it's straight, that's one of your first signs that your slab is may be okay, but it's it's a you know a beginner step. It's just one of the first things they're like, hey, the, you know I don't see any movement in this wall. All right, uh, the next thing that I notice is actually just a little bit further back here. But most foundation issues come from drainage and how water travels around the structure and does it travel away and back to the street or away from the structure. So what I got here. As you can see down by this porch, you have a divot right here. And so every time it rains in this area, you have a lot of rain pouring in one area. And what happens when water hits it? I'll say it again, clay and sandy soils, the soil starts to expand and contract at a higher rate. And you start to develop cracks and stress in your structure. All right, so the one of the other things that you want to notice is, is as you walk around the exterior, this is where you're going to develop most of your opinion how the structure is moving or not is that you'll see these squares in front of the structure or around them especially on older ones and this is normally from prior foundation work so if you start spotting this you want to remember that most foundation companies if they're older foundation companies and they've been around for a while they offer a lifetime warranty on where work is done so you know that you might be able to get work done again in just in this area Remember, if they have to add pier somewhere else, that's gonna cost you more money. All right, so one of the first problem areas is, is right here between the, the door and the exterior wall. This is where you're gonna identify most of your structural movement is in between windows, doors, anything protruding inside the structure and the exterior wall. This is a perfect example. You can see how this wall is separating from the, from the door the caulking line is bigger at the top and smaller at the bottom, and you can definitely see why this wall moving. So let's try to figure out why this wall is moving. And most of the time, remember, it's the drainage. It's because of drainage. All right, so we're trying to figure out why this wall is moving. It's all about the big picture. It's never really going to be because of a bad foundation pour or bad concrete. It's gonna come from natural elements, some exterior elements that is actually causing the structure to move. So right here, we have actually several things going on. We have some erosion, we have bad drainage, and we also have a very large tree probably reaching for water underneath the slab. And you can even see the roots from this big tree coming in and traveling underneath the same area where we have erosion and bad drainage. The water is literally coming from the exterior and rolling right to the structure underneath it. 
Another problem area is actually in this corner here. You can see that there's a lot of erosion in this area. And a lot of places where water can easily get underneath the structure and it won't disperse properly. We don't really see any stress in this area inside the property, so they're lucky right now, but this is going to be a preventative. If they're already adding in drainage plans on the other side of the structure, then they need to add one here too. But we did find one more final stress indicator in the back where we think this inspector was right calling out a structural engineer. This is the other problem area that we found. I, you know, it's actually kind of sad to say as I walked past this the first pass, and I talk about this all the time, this is an area that you want to pay attention to. So that's why it's really important to always walk outside twice and walk the interior twice. But we walked outside and we noticed uh, that the caulking line is smaller at the bottom like I'm talking about, and it's wider at the top. And you can even see the brick separated at the top and it's uh, shifted. So this wall is actually shifting away over here too as well. All related, in my opinion, to these drainage issues. There's a lot of uh, drainage issues over here and this, and we actually just learned this, that the house was involved in Farvey too. So uh, where all that water came in and then it never really left and it caused the structure to move. So let's go inside and take a look at the window where we kind of missed it on the first pass and we can show you what it looks like and then we'll shoot some levels of the property. So coming on the inside of the window, when we shot levels, we really noticed that we had more issues here and the contractor covered it up. I wouldn't say the best of job, but it sucked back to the first time. Kind of embarrassing, but uh, we can see right here, they even framed the uh, sheet rock and to get this window to fit. So this window is probably not even set 100% right and it's gonna leak probably during heavy rain. And you can even see how they even cut these baseboards to where they sit so this wall looks like it's flat. Good job, contractor. Trick me the first time. All right, closing this video. Uh, I actually agree with the other home inspector where they had they came out and determined that there's foundation issues. It always comes down to how you document it, and that's the reason why I really like the zip level. You want to come in and shoot levels of the property. So what we're here, right here in several areas, in less than a 10 foot span, we had greater than an inch and a half rise or drop, depending on which way you're measuring it from. But uh, what we look for is about an inch and a half deflection over a 20 foot span, and we had it less than 10. So we had what I like to say is abnormal amounts of stress. And that's when you really want to, as a home inspector, you want to go to a structural engineer next and let them determine if the stress is okay for the structure. This one has a lot of angles on it and it's kind of going all over the place. So that's, it's really hard to just come up with your normal opinion based off the experience. So always refer to that structural engineer whenever you see stress. And as agents, make sure that you go to a, a, um, a structural engineer next after your home inspector. All right, so that's Christmas Day Action. If you like these foundation videos, please leave a comment below and please always like and subscribe. Take it easy. Catch you on the next one.